to do an example game of Gladys Hereticus. Here I have a character sheet with strength, dexterity, endurance, equipment, and XP. I'm going to generate my character by drawing cards to generate my stats. So my strength will be a jack, which is 11. My dexterity is an ace, which is 14. So pretty good stats so far. Endurance, 2. So very low endurance. For my equipment, I'll generate 5 pieces of equipment from the equipment table using the first region of the game, the Smoldering City. So, 5 pieces of equipment. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, what have we got? 7 is armor. So when we get armor, we draw another card to see what kind of armor it is. Armor with a value of 3. Armor, I need to just put in brackets, 3. That's what our 7 is. 5 is a healing potion. Healing potion. And because we've got another 5 there, we actually have 2 healing potions, so I'll put times 2. 10 is a magic sword. There's a weapon that ignores armor unless the armor is magical. Uh, it uses a strength modifier. And you can see on the um, quick reference here, our strength modifier being jack is plus one. And our dexterity is plus two being an ace. So we can go and write that in there. Uh, plus one, plus two. And our endurance is low. So we won't have to worry too much about that. So that's what 10 is, magic sword. And then eight is a dagger. So that's probably not gonna be much use considering we have a magic sword already. But we may be able to swap that at a, um, at a store later on. Now that we've generated our character, we can go ahead and reshuffle all the cards into the deck, which I will do now. And we can generate our first area. So, we're in the Smoldering City, we draw one card to see what kind of area we're in. It's a nine. So we're in a steep, crumbling stairwell is a small area. So then we generate what kind of encounter there might be there. It's a queen. So check steep crumbling stairwell. Queen means two monsters. So we generate two monsters straight away. Now this queen is going to be my discard pile. And the nine I'm going to keep there to remind me what area I'm in. Because I may need to rest here later depending on how it goes. So I generate two monsters. Usually I keep them separate from everything else so I can keep track of them. So a five is a burned hoplite and a two is a skeletal janissary. So now we're in combat. I get the first action. So I will try to attack the burned hoplite with my magic sword. In order to do that, I draw a card. Uh, the burned hoplite has an armor rating. You can see here, five burned hoplite. Armor rating of four. So I need to get higher than four in order to damage him. Now because my strength is plus one and a sword uses strength modifier, I'm going to have a plus one to my roll. So here we go. I attack the, the hoplite. Three plus one is four, which does not get past his armor. So it goes in the discard pile. That's my, my turn. So now the two monsters will attack me. The burned hoplite does, he has a minus one attack strength. You can see here, burned hoplite, minus one attack. So he's gonna draw a card attempting to attack me, and he has a minus one to his, his value. Ace, which has a value of 14. You can look here on the quick reference, there's a high card values. Ace is 14. So 14 becomes 13, it's minus one. Now I have an armor of three, so that reduces three from the damage. So I take 10 damage. Where does that 10 damage go? I check my stat affected and I draw a card to determine which stat is going to be affected. So I draw a four, which means strength. So I take 10 damage on my strength. I'm now down to one strength, which means I have 
a minus two modifier. So for all my future attacks, I'm now minus two instead of plus one. So it's hit me pretty hard. Now the skeletal grip janissary will attack me as well. He also has a minus one strength modifier or attack modifier. He draws a king. King is value of 13. Minus one becomes 12. I have an armor of three. So 12 minus three is nine. So nine damage. I draw to see which, uh, which stat that's placed on. And Joker means endurance. So what did I say? King is 13 becomes 12. Minus three is nine. So nine damage on my endurance goes down to zero. Uh, any extra damage is just ignored. So it just goes to zero. Uh, now, none of, neither of these monsters are diseased. Otherwise, I'd have to check the disease if they do manage to do damage on me. So now it's my turn. Uh, at this stage, I could choose to run, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep attacking and see what happens. And maybe you'll see how lethal this game is. Uh, if I was trying to be smart and play the long game, I would certainly run at this point, because I have one stat at one and one stat at zero. So it's not looking good. Plus my uh, my strict modifier is minus two, so it's not looking very good. Uh, I could try to take a healing potion. Um, but that would be my turn, taking the healing potion. In fact, you know what, let's do that. We'll take a healing potion. So I draw a card, and that's the value I can add to my statistics. So a joker is 15. So immediately, my strength would go up to 11. My endurance would go back up to 2. That's 13, and uh, so that's 10, 11, 12 so far. And I'll have extra that I don't need to use, that I can't use. So that heals me up fully. Now I only have one healing potion left. But that's my turn, I can't do anything else. So they attack me again. We'll hope they don't attack as hard this time. The Burned Hoplite attacks me. Gets a Jack, which becomes 10. So I take seven damage, uh, because 10 minus my armor three becomes seven. Where does the damage go? It goes to my Endurance. So my Endurance goes to zero. The Skeletal Janissary attacks me. Gets a two. His attack strength is minus one, so it becomes one. It doesn't get past my armor. So he needs at least a four to get past my armor. So now I will attack the Burned Hoplite with my Magic Sword. I get a 7. Uh, my Strength modifier is plus 1, so that becomes an 8. It get, gets past the Burned Hoplite's armor of 4 and does 4 damage. So I'll put a dice there showing 4 damage. The Hoplite only has five, hit, uh, 5 health, so if he takes one more point of damage, he'll be dead. Now the Hoplite attacks me. Gets a 3. Minus 1 is not enough to get past my armor. The Janissary attacks me as well. Six minus one becomes five, which does two damage on me. And that two damage goes on my Dexterity, which goes down to 12. Not too bad. I attack the Burnt Hoplite again. My Magic Sword, which becomes a nine. So that Hoplite is killed immediately. It gets past his armor easily and inflicts more than enough damage. So I remove that. And I can give myself one experience points. I'll put my XP down here so it's so it can go across underneath the equipment. One XP. And usually I just keep track of it in a tally chart. You know, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, etc. Like that. That way I can easily add points as I go. So I've killed the hoplite. And now I can uh, now it's the enemy's turn. He'll attack me, the skull of Janissary. Gets a four, minus one becomes three. Not enough to get past my armor. So I attack him with my magic sword. 4 becomes 5, uh, it has an armor of 2, so that's 3 damage on the Skeletal Janissary. Next round, the Janissary attacks me, 5 becomes 4, which does 1 damage on me. That damage goes on my Strength, so I'm down to 10 Strength. My Strength is now plus 0, because when you go from 11 down to 10, you can see as soon as I go down to 10, it becomes plus 0 modifier. Okay, now I attack the Janissary again. That should be more than enough to take him down. It's an 11. Oh, sorry, it's 10 because I don't have a plus one anymore. Uh, it has two armor, so it becomes eight damage, uh, which is more than enough. It only has five health, so the Janissary is killed. So I gain another XP. Now, what I want to do is probably rest in this area. I'll rest so I can draw a card and add that to my stats. So that'll be two, two more, takes that to 14, and it'll become up to full. So I've fully rested. 
Uh, now because I've rested, I need to draw another encounter card for this area. That's why I keep the area separate. So a 10 in the steep crumbling stairwell is one monster. So we generate that monster. It is a mutilated wizard. So I attempt to attack the mutilated wizard with my magic sword. Uh, the mutilated wizard, you can see here, has eight health, four armor, which is also magical. So it will defend against my uh, magic sword. Uh, that's something I forgot because the ma there was a magic sword. It actually ignored all the armor. So that fight before would have been much easier. Uh, whoops, forgot about that. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so, but because this mutilated wizard does have magical armor, uh, it will still defend against my magic sword. Uh, whereas non magical armor, such as this reptilian, my sword would just ignore it, so it just slices right through. The wizard also has a plus three attack strength, which it counts as magical. Uh, so if I had magic armor, I would defend against it, but if I didn't have magic armor, the wizard would, um, his, his weaponry would go straight through my armor. Okay, so let's attack. We attack with a magic sword. Uh, Jack is 11, a value of 11, which becomes 12 for my strength. Uh, the wizard has an armor of 4, so that becomes 8 damage. So I'll give him a dice, and another dice just to show 8 damage. And in fact, that is the wizard's... Oh, sorry, it goes in the ace. That is the wizard's health, so the wizard is just killed straight away. We led a wizard. So if, because he's a face card, an enemy generated with a face card, I get 2 XP. And that is that. And so that's the first area. I continue to generate areas. So what's my next area? It is a king, which is a shattered ballroom. So I will generate the encounter for the shattered ballroom. Ace is loot. You can see here, shattered ballroom. Follow along, and I got an, a king, I believe. No, I got an ace, which is loot, a result of loot up there. So I'm going to generate some loot. Here we go. Draw one card. What have I got? Queen, a fire staff, which is pretty powerful. So I'll add that to my inventory. Fire staff. Great. So now we go to the next area. That is a decrepit study. What have we got in the decrepit study? 10. Uh, nothing. It's empty. It's almost too quiet. The next area. It's a treacherous rooftop. Is there anything there? It seems quiet. Next area. It's a crumbling corridor. Is there anything there? No, it is also quiet. So I work my way through what seems like an abandoned area of the city. Next area is a corrupted courtyard. What is inside? There's two monsters in the corrupted courtyard. What have we got? We have a Yuanti Berserker, which is a, a snake, a snake being, uh, and a half jackal. So I attack the Yuanti with my magic sword. I get a nine, plus one for my strength. Uh, the Yuanti does not have magical armor, so he takes nine damage. That's how it's supposed to go, because his, uh, my weapon goes straight through his armor. Uh, then it's the enemy's turn, the Yuanti attacks me. He has a plus two ma attack strength, which counts as magical, so that it completely ignores my armor. Uh, King, which is uh, 13, becomes 14, 15 for his plus two attack. So 15 damage on my dexterity. So I'm now at zero dexterity. Pretty hard hit from the Yuanti. Then the half jackal attacks me. He has no modifier. He doesn't get past my armor. I'll attack the Yuanti again. I got an eight plus one becomes nine. Yuanti has, uh, I completely ignore his armor so that does kill the Yuanti. So he hits hard but he also can't take damage from a magic sword too well. Because that was a, a monster generated with a face card, I get 2 XP for it. So up to 6 XP. Now it's the enemy's turn. The half jackal will attack me. Gets a 6. Uh, that does get past my armor, so what does that go on to? It goes on to my strength. 
So 6 minus 3 is 3, so I take 3 damage on my strength. I'm now at plus 0 for my attacks. I attack the, the um, half jackal with my magic sword. 9 is 9 damage. He has 2 armor, but I ignore that, so he's killed instantly. Only has 6 health, so he's destroyed. And that's pretty much the game. You go through. I'm almost out of the, the deck of cards there. I'll generate a few more. When I get to the end of this card, the end of this pack of cards, you'll, um, I'll finish the video, and you should be able to play from then on. So, we're into a new area. A destroyed guild hall. What have we got inside? One monster. What is it? It is a, a tortured reptilian, which has 12 health, 4 armor, and a plus 2 attack. So I attack the, the reptilian with my sword. I get a 10. Uh, I ignore his armor, so that does 10 damage straight away. It's pretty powerful magic weapons if you start with them. If you don't start with a weapon or armor, it can be a lot harder. Although you usually start with at least one. Uh, the tortured reptilian attacks me. It has a plus two. King. So 13 for the king becomes 15. And what, do, what does that go on? That goes on my dexterity. Because my dexterity is already zero, I have to draw another card. So what I do is I grab all the cards that aren't needed and shuffle them. So I keep my location card, the current damage, and the monster. So I remember what they are. This uh, reptilian only has two health to go. So I should easily be able to take it out. And I'm not if I'm not too, I'm not too close to death, well though, if this hits me in the strength, it could be very bad. I could be very close to death. So, this damage goes on my strength. So, that's pretty much strength at zero. Now I'm almost dead. I take one more hit from this um, reptilian, and my endurance goes to zero. That would be it for me. I'd be dead. So, right now, I'll keep that there. It's the current location. So, I attack the reptilian with my magic sword. And that just annihilates it, so I'd get 2 XP for killing that monster. That's it dead. And that's pretty much the game, that's how it plays. Uh, it's relatively straightforward. And then if I ever get to a entrance to the necropolis, I, and I clear it out, any monsters there, I can choose to go to the necropolis, which will allow me to start generating monsters and um, areas from the necropolis table instead of the smoldering city. So you'll have a bunch of different areas with different chances of monsters and loot uh, and different enemies as well. Some of which are pretty horrifying. And as well, uh, different loot as well in the necropolis. So you'll have more, uh, some more powerful weapons. And um, this is the device that you're trying to get that will finish the game for you. So it's more likely to find it down there. I hope that helps. And yeah, may you travel well.